House of the Dragon Season 2 Premiere Recap. Let's go. We begin with a new animation for the opening credits. It's a tapestry being sewn if you're into that shit. Cool. Would you like to see the tapestry? <laughs> <laughs> we start up north. Jaceris Targaryen flies to Winterfell to talk to Cregan Stark to recruit House Stark to join Team Black. Cregan says, you didn't threaten me with your dragon, so points for you, but I got bigger fish to fry. There's a reason why we built a 700-foot wall that even dragons won't fly past because we are literally fighting death itself. But word is bond. We pledge allegiance, but I can only send you all my old soldiers, the Greybeards. In that moment, Jaceris gets a raven telling him that his brother is dead. Back in Dragonstone, Damon tells Rhaenys we're going to go kill Vagar, that hoary bitch. An eye for an eye, a son for a son. She says she only listens to the queen who is taking her time to grieve, and she's wise, not acting on emotions, not pointing any elbows at anybody. Damon reminds that she had the chance to end all of this before it started which to be honest I got to agree with him all that it's not my war to start nonsense was bullshit she could have been over in five seconds but she's playing by some made up thrones rules Damon says I command you to ride with me she says you ain't the king bitch it is a command what that you were the king Corlys the sea snake appears with this dude Alan A-L-Y-N which makes it a thronesy name as opposed to A-L-A-N who is your white neighbor in the suburbs like hey Alan crazy weather right Alan Alan says the blacksmiths dropped off his dagger Corlys says he had it made for Lucerus that's when shit gets a little awkward because after a little research outside the show I learned that Alan is Corlys's bastard son daddy issues for sure over to the Red Keep where Helena Allison's daughter she's doing her weirdo quiet thing when her brother husband and current king Aegon shows up looking for his nephew son Jaharis to bring him to the small council take your incest baby to work day Helena says I'm afraid and Aegon says don't sweat it we have Vagar she says I'm not afraid of the dragons I'm afraid of the rats not the dragons the rats. Everyone in the room freezes and Aegon's like, ha my wife is one crazy bitch, huh? But remember, Helena is bare minimum three for three on prophecies from season one. Cut to Allison, she's getting a hat underneath that green dress. So Kristen is on his knees, he wants to take her there. They finish up, Allison says we can never do this again, and Sir Cole's like, yeah, sure, okay. King Aegon shows up to the small council with his son. Everyone is mobilizing different houses and armies. Somehow, Allison is still keeping her fingers crossed for a peace treaty. Don't hold your breath, bitch. Aegon's son, Jaehaerys, continues to pester Tywin Lannister, who is the great-great-great uncle to Tywin Lannister. When he complains about the kid bothering him, Aegon interrupts and says, well, maybe Jaehaerys wants a horsey ride. Is the heir to the throne bothering you, Tyland? No. No, 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 not in the least, Your Grace. Because I think he wants a ride. Your Grace. A, a ride? A pony ride. Aemon almost pulls a Logan Roy, telling Tyland to get down on his knees like he was about to play boar on the floor. Aegon is pissed that they didn't kill Rhaenyra when they had the chance, and Otto reminds the whole room that's Allison's fault and undermines her in front of everyone. Aemon shows up to the council, says he's gonna ride with Vagar and Sunfire to take over the Riverlands. Allison says he can't go with fight with dragons, we won't be able to call them back, and we need one here as a deterrent in case Rhaenyra attacks us because SOMEBODY went and accidentally killed her son. Otto says, listen, we all fucked up when Viserys died, let's just be patient. You've already demonstrated your might, Your Grace. We must now favor patience and restraint Allison runs into that pervert, Lord Laris, and he was like, I was looking for you, but the maid said you were busy. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. She was getting that pussy ate. So weirdo Laris starts mansplaining to Allison all about how he fired and replaced her entire entourage. Dragon! <laughs> Rhaenyra flies to a small fishing village where she finds Arax's wings and Lucerus's cloak, getting the clothes that Rainy said she was looking for. Now she can go get busy again. Back at King's Landing, Aegon the Magnanimous has all of his townspeople in the throne room petitioning for help. Aegon, being naive and wanting to be liked, offers to help everyone that begs for sheep and salt and blacksmiths, asking for advances on their work. He's like, cool, sounds good, take whatever you want. Otto explains to the king, you can't please all these people. Again, feels a lot like succession. Otto is Jerry, Aegon's Roman. Not only do they both jerk off funny, but they both want to be beloved. Kind of feels like a shift in his character, considering season one, he was the sickest fuck in the realm, and now he's kind of got jokes, and he's being funny, but I'll trust the writers. After the petition, Lord Laris is busy dick riding Aegon, telling him that Otto is shady and should be the hand of the king. Allison meets with Otto and says, let's just wait until Aegon gets tired of playing king, and then we take over, and Otto says, bet, but that means violence. And Allison's like, fine, but not too much violence, okay? We go to the blockade where Corliss has Sir Eric or Sir Eric, Green Jacket, Gold Jacket, who gives a shit to search ships. Eric finds the White Worm, aka Damon's old boo, who told Otto where Aegon was in season one. Where is Prince Aegon? I thought the prince is in Flea Bottom when no one is to be trusted. Damon tells her to put her in jail, and Eric says, nah, there's no honor in that. And Damon says, oh, honor? Was it honor that let Aegon, the kid you babysat for, steal the Iron Throne? Eric explains that he and Eric swore an oath at 8 and 10 to protect the royal family, so what the fuck were they supposed to do when you guys turned on each other? Rhaenyra returns to Dragonstone. She joins the council and says her one and only line of this episode... I want him. Aemon Targaryen. Mic drop, walks off. The show bounces back and forth between Rhaenyra's family having a funeral for Lucerys, while Allison is in the church lighting candles for the dead. She lights one for Viserys and one for Lucerys, showing that she still has some semblance of empathy. Damon talks to the White Worm and says, tell me all your secrets about the Red Keep and I'll let you go free. She recommends two really big pieces of shit, a corrupt guardsman named Blood and Cheese, a rat catcher for the castle. Cheese and Blood, they sound like a good name for like a shitty band duo, like, thank you, Cleveland! We are Blood and Cheese! Together, these two are told to go into the castle and kill Aemon Targaryen, a son for a son. Cheese asks, if we can't find Aemon, then what? No answer for Damon 
as they cut over to Eamon. He is battle planning with Sir Kristen. Eamon wants dragons and says his mom is dumb and hypocritical. Kristen backs up Allison because he is sprung off that pussy. He says that she has a gentle heart, and Aegon says that's what makes her a fool. Otto joins the combo saying, you're not planning behind our backs, are you? And he's like, nah. Otto tells Eamon, you'll get your vengeance, but you gotta keep a grip on your impulses because your brother, who's a sex addict with a dog fighting ring for children, he can't control himself, so you have to. Coming down the stretch, Blood and Cheese infiltrate the castle pretending to be medieval exterminators hunting rats with a dog and trying to find Eamon to kill him. They then kick the dog for no reason, which ordinarily would be the worst thing that someone could do, but what ensues after this is one of the worst scenes in the history of Thrones. Cheese finds Queen Helena and holds her at night point while, while her two babies, one boy and one girl, are sleeping. Cheese says, do a cock check and find out which one is the boy, which somehow I think checking for a baby cock is worse than murdering one. They then make Helena point out which one is the boy. Blood and Cheese debate if she's telling the truth. They decide she is, and then they fucking decapitate the baby in the bassinet. You can hear the slicing of flesh and bone as they saw the baby's head off. And somehow, some way, this scene is even worse in the books. In the books, Helena has two sons, Maelor and Jaehaerys. They ask Helena which son to kill. She picks her youngest, Maelor, hoping to spare Jaehaerys because he's Aegon's firstborn son. Blood and Cheese laugh at her and kill the other son, Jaehaerys, forcing Maelor to grow up forever knowing that his mom wanted him dead. Yikes. Helena runs down the hall with her baby, not a fucking guard in sight. I mean, just the worst defense you've ever seen. Why? Because she bursts into Allison's room and she sees Sir Kristen Cole getting his dick rode. Remember when Sir Kristen was so offended that Rhaenyra wanted him to be her whore and now he's literally like a human dildo for Allison, too busy to get that surfboard to defend the queen's nephew son? And Allison, who swore to never do it again? Hypocritical fucks. Episode 3 next week. Cannot imagine Rhaenyra is cool with Damon hiring goons to murder babies, so we'll see where things end up. Right now, I don't think I'm Team Black or Team Green. I think I'm just Team Rhaenyra.